Saint Barbara is a much-loved saint whose feast is celebrated universally on December 4th. This story took place in the 3rd century, hence there are many historical inaccuracies presented in the legends. This episode brings to you the most common version of this amazing saint's life. Saint Barbara, also known as the Great Martyr Barbara, was an early Christian Greek martyr born mid-3rd century in Heliopolis, Phoenicia. Her father, the pagan Dioscorus, was a rich and illustrious man in the Syrian city of Heliopolis. After the death of his wife, he devoted himself to his only daughter. Barbara grew to become a very beautiful woman, and her tales of beauty and wisdom traveled across borders. At this time, the Christian faith had only been welcomed by the poor and needy. Dioscorus was a devoted believer in the Greco-Roman religion. He hated this new religion that was getting popular in Roman society. He was afraid that his daughter would get influenced by Christian values too, so he decided to lock her up away from people. Dioscorus ordered to build a huge tower. He shielded Barbara from the world by locking her high up within the tower. Barbara spent years in the tower. She got her food and laundry by way of a basket on a rope. She was taught by pagan teachers who taught her about their gods. From the tower, there was a view of hills stretching into the distance. By day, Barbara was able to gaze upon the wooded hills the swiftly flowing rivers, and the meadows covered with a mottled blanket of flowers. During night, she looked and marveled at the shining moon and the stars in the sky. She often pondered about the first cause and creator of so harmonious and splendid a world. Gradually, she became convinced that the soulless idols her father worshipped were merely the work of human hands. She realized that the idols could not have made the surrounding world. One day, a stranger put a book about Christianity in the basket for laundry. Barbara got the book, and she started reading it. After reading the book, she longed to learn more about the religion. As Barbara grew older, her father, Dioscorus, began presenting men to her for marriage. She refused them all and warned her father that his persistence could forever damage their relationship. Dioscorus allowed for Barbara to leave her tower, hoping some freedom would change her attitude. After years of seclusion, she was finally free. She roamed around the gardens and streams she used to see from the tower. Barbara also used this opportunity to meet other Christians. They taught her about the Lord Jesus, the Holy Trinity, and the Church. Through the providence of God, a priest arrived in Heliopolis from Alexandria, disguised as a merchant. After instructing her in the mysteries of the Christian faith, he baptized Barbara, then returned to his own country. During this time, a luxurious bathhouse was being built at the house of Dioscorus. By his orders, the workers prepared to put two windows on the south side. But Barbara, taking advantage of her father's absence, asked them to make a third window, thereby forming a trinity of light. As she was the daughter of their employer, the workers complied. On one of the walls of the bathhouse, Barbara traced a cross with her finger. The cross was deeply etched into the marble, as if by an iron instrument. Later, her footprints were imprinted on the stone steps of the bathhouse. Barbara's bathhouse became a place full of healing power, and many miracles occurred there. St. Simeon Metaphorstes even compared it to the stream of Jordan. On his return, Dioscorus was surprised to see the third window, and he inquired into the meaning of this addition. 
Barbara replied that she had converted to Christianity and that three windows symbolized the three faces of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Dioscorus went into a rage, grabbed a sword, and was on the point of striking her with it. Barbara, quick to respond, fled before her father could strike her. Dioscorus followed Barbara, running behind her, holding the sword. Barbara saw a hill down the road, and as she approached it, by some miracle, the hill opened and hid Barbara within a crevice. When Dioscorus arrived at the scene, he couldn't find Barbara anywhere. He climbed up the hill, but Barbara wasn't there. He searched for her down the hill, but with no luck. Where could she have gone, wondered Dioscorus. After a long and fruitless search for his daughter, Dioscorus saw two shepherds on the hill. He asked them if they had seen his daughter. The first shepherd denied, but the second betrayed Barbara. He showed him the cave where Barbara was hiding. Some legends indicate that later he was turned to stone and his flock was turned into locusts. Dioscorus dragged his daughter out of the cave and started beating her. Barbara did not cry, and she told him that she would suffer till the end for Jesus Christ. He then took her home and locked her up. He ordered his servants to not give her any food until she renounced her new religion. After a week of starving, when Dioscorus asked Barbara if she would renounce her faith now, Barbara refused. Finally, he handed her over to the prefect of the city, named Martianus. Together, they continued to beat and torture her throughout the day, but Barbara never renounced her Christian faith. By night, St. Barbara prayed fervently to her heavenly bridegroom, and the Savior himself appeared and healed her wounds. When the prefect and Dioscorus saw her healed wounds, they were surprised and even more angry. They subjected the saint to new and even more frightening torments. But she endured the sufferings as the Lord gave her the strength and the courage to stand firm. The prefect then ordered her to be tortured in public. The soldiers took Barbara to the streets and started torturing her. In the crowd, there was a virtuous Christian woman, Juliana, an inhabitant of Heliopolis. Her heart was filled with sympathy for the voluntary martyrdom of the beautiful and illustrious maiden. Juliana also wanted to suffer for Christ. She began to denounce the torturers in a loud voice, and this angered the prefect. He ordered Juliana to be tortured along with Barbara in full view of the public. He thought this could be an example for anyone who wished to become a Christian. Both martyrs were tortured for a long time. Their bodies were raked and wounded with hooks but both women stayed strong and firm in their faith. The prefect then ordered the soldiers to strip them of their clothes and parade them. Some of the soldiers were amazed at the courage of these two women. They admired their willpower and wondered whether they too should follow their faith. But the orders of the prefect had to be obeyed they reluctantly started stripping the clothes of Barbara and Juliana. Through the prayers of St. Barbara, the Lord sent an angel who covered the nakedness of the holy martyrs with a splendid robe. The prefect was losing his patience and ordered the soldiers to burn them. But as the soldiers approached the women, the angel made the torches extinguish. This repeated many times, and the prefect decided to give up. Dioscorus decided to take things in his own hand 
and asked the prefect for permission to behead her. The prefect agreed, and both women were brought. And so did Barbara die at the hands of her own father. As the sword fell from his arms, lightning fell upon this cruel father and consumed him as he stood. The prefect who stood along with Dioscorus died in the lightning. Because lightning appeared to revenge the death of Barbara, she became the protectress against lightning and thunder. Doubt and questions surrounding the history of St. Barbara caused her to be removed from the general Roman calendar, but not from the Catholic Church's list of saints. Many pious Orthodox Christians are in the habit of chanting the troparion of St. Barbara each day, recalling the Savior's promise to her that those who remembered her and her sufferings would be preserved from a sudden, unexpected death and would not depart this life without benefit of the holy mysteries of Christ. St. Barbara is commemorated on December 4th. O oh, holy St. Barbara, through your inspiration, intercession, and by your example of courage, keep me chaste, fervent, and always ready to do God's will. Please help us by your prayers. Amen.